It's 9.30 in the morning on Sunday, the 2nd of April. All right. 9.30 in the morning. It's freaking dark outside. And I don't think it's actually raining at the moment. But it's pretty dark. And there's a little bit of water coming off the eave there, so maybe it is. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of rain. Okay. I want to just document some of this. Okay, some of this is what's going. Two boxes of electrical stuff and uh, chargers for power tools. A whole bunch of camera stuff. Um, that's my stereo speaker. Two boxes of tools. Those are waterproof totes. Okay, so today's the day I go down and pick up the bus and drive to the ranch. Okay. Turn on another light here. Loading ramps. Also losing my voice, it feels like. Uh, I got a fan, a little dish heater, another heater next to the fire extinguisher there. Two boxes of hardware stuff and a laptop. I'll be taking the backpack and the camel back for the water. And an undisclosed amount of stuff from here. I have a pretty much that's going to be a laundry basket full of clothes that I'm taking. That was laundry for the last week. There's the generator, 4,000 watt Harbor Freight. Um, let's get a shot of the storm because it looks like it's really coming down. Now. Also on the list that I'm taking, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a pot of coffee, I'm going to fill up that coffee thermos, take the blender, probably my shake mix, I'll take one or two plates and a bowl or two, cooler, and drink container. Oh, that blue water toad is going. And I made a half gallon of tea that's going. I got some apples that I'm taking. I did grocery shopping already. That's all out in the truck. I just left it out there from yesterday. Um, you'd think I was scared of the dark. I'm taking all those flashlights. They're magnetic, so I should be able to stick them to the ceiling of the bus. Make pretty handy lights. Look like hell. Anyway, so the idea is uh, pick up the bus at 2, that's when I meet the people at the bus place. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my truck loaded. I'm hoping that the weather breaks around noon. That's um, kind of what we're, we're planning on. So I'll get a break from the weather, I'll load up the truck, I'll head down to San Antonio. It's about an hour, hour and a half drive, something like that. Um, unload everything into the bus sign the papers, whatever I need to take possession of the bus, and then drive my truck back here to Austin. 
switch over to the motorcycle, drive the motorcycle down to the bus, use the ramps, load the motorcycle in the back. I'll have to take some seats out of the bus to get the bike in there. And then it gets tricky about how I actually fit everything in. But either way, we'll make it work. So we get the bike in the bus. That'll probably be about four o'clock. It gives me about three hours of daylight. Once we're in the bus, drive over to the ranch. It's about 500 miles. Last couple times it's been about a 10 hour drive uh, by the time you figure stops and everything like that. I'm not gonna push the bus very fast. Um, I hope to get better mileage. Worst case scenario, I think I'll get four miles to the gallon. Best case, closer to eight. Um, I kind of broke that down a little bit. Uh, the bus, if I get four miles to the gallon, 500 miles, 250 budgeted for gas. Coming back, I can make it on 25 on the motorcycle. And the truck, I can do at about $66. There's the bus. Whatever. Okay. okay, so... Worst storm possible, looks like it's hitting today. But I'm looking at some breaks after two o'clock. So I should have hopefully a break on the weather when I'm unloading the bus, taking the seats out, drive back here. Hopefully I don't get rained on too much driving the motorcycle down to get the bus once I'm in the bus, whatever, you're inside again. Um, Hopefully not too windy, because that would be annoying. So let's see. Um, in the in the realm of impossibilities, um, I'm not a hundred percent sure how the motorcycle is getting in the bus. Uh, I think I got the ramp thing figured out. Uh, the I'm pretty sure the handlebars are wider than the bus door, so that's going to be awkward. So I'll be at the top of the ramp trying to get through a narrow door. Um, the motorcycle would not fit with the seats in; it's too wide. It won't go down the aisle. Um, once the bike is in there, that part will be pretty simple. Um, I've got uh, cargo straps; I can tie it down, so that that part's easy. Getting it out again, I'll probably just come out backwards down the ramp. Um, the hardest thing right now is today and it keeps coming back to everything that I'm doing today is the hardest thing because once I get to the ranch and in the future I'll have an easier time I can build a proper ramp um, I just don't have time and space and money right now to do what I want to do so if I ever do future travels in the bus it'll be much simpler the bus, um, I've never driven a bus before. I've never driven air brakes before. Um, I'm not licensed to drive a school bus, but uh, hopefully I can work through that. In the future, if I do decide to take the bus on trips, then I'll get my air brake endorsement and so on. Um, I have never driven this bus. I did ride in it once. The guy took me for a quick drive seems like it runs well it's got good power um, don't I don't see any mechanical problems I don't have any spare tires um, and I don't have the tools to change the tire anyway so if I have a tire problem I'm gonna have to call for uh, roadside assistance um, which I don't have roadside ass assistance also there's a good portion of the drive that I don't have cell phone coverage so you know there's that too. Um, ultimate worst case scenario, I can always unload the motorcycle and ride for help. So that, you know, that's one possibility. Um, I don't really know the mechanical history of the bus. It's got um, 200,000 miles on it, but you know, it seems to run okay. Buses tend to be fairly reliable, so. Uh, and it's got the smaller motor, it's got the 366, so better mileage, um, so somewhat detuned, it's you know, not the 454, so 
hopefully that helps. Um, and then, okay, today's Sunday, drive all night tonight. And then I got Monday through Friday. Um, I decided I'm not going to pay rent on the apartment until after I get there. That frees up a lot of money. So if I do have a major problem, I've got almost a thousand dollars. So I can make that work if I need to. Uh, once I'm there, then I go into town um, Monday, tomorrow, get internet, pay the rent, and then that part's covered. Um, I am probably going to take my microwave and then buy a new one when I get back here because Friday is payday. That's kind of the thing is whatever it takes to get there and then the end of this week I get paid before I come back. So that part's all right. Anyway, uh, it's coming up on 10 o'clock. I'm hoping there's a break in the weather or close to noon. I'm going to spend next hour or so finalizing my loadout. And then when I get a break, I can just walk down. Um, it's going to be generator first, um, taking two or three spare tires from the truck. Um, part of the loadout is getting stuff out of here that I don't want here anymore. Because uh, when I get my transfer, which could happen in the next month or two, everything's going to the ranch. And so I'm looking at what's big that I can get rid of pretty easily now. And uh, then when I, you know, every time I go out to the ranch, I'll take more stuff and leave it there. Because ultimately it all goes. So I'm taking some things today that I don't need there yet. I just don't need them here either kind of thing. So, uh, so I've got four spare wheels and tires for the truck. I'm going to take three of them and leave one here for the next time I go out so I have a spare wheel for the truck. Um, all the camping gear is already in the truck. I just have been leaving it out there behind the seats. That'll get transferred to the bus. Um, coming back on the motorcycle, it's just going to be me on the motorcycle for 500 miles, which is a long freaking drive. Um, I'll have money, so I could probably hit a Motel 6 halfway. Haven't looked at that too seriously right now. 500 miles is brutal on a motorcycle, especially since I haven't ridden more than about 5 miles a day. So that's going to be painful. Um, if I can ride 2 or 3 hours, stop for half an hour, get off, stretch a little bit, uh, take a break, hit another hour. I mean, if I stop once an hour, I should be okay. Um, man, it is just pouring outside right now. Hopefully it gets done with that pretty soon. Anyway, um, I think the biggest thing for this trip, it's just a lot of unknowns and a lot of things that I know are going to be difficult and I don't know what I don't know. Um, you know, if I break down, it's really going to screw things up. Um, you know, what do you do with the bus if it breaks down? If I can't fix it, I'm taking my tools, but I don't have any spare parts and I don't know anything about the bus really. So, you know, or it might just, just go and it'll be fine. And, you know, the hardest thing is this is a one time shot, get it there. And then I got my, you know, literally the rest of my life to figure out everything after that. I don't have to drive the bus after today. You know, I could just sit there and I'll live in it, at which point it's kind of expensive for a shell. But later on, when I get closer to retirement, I can do a full conversion, set it up as a motorhome, and use it to drive around if I decide to. Um, and a lot of it will depend on mileage, too. You know, when I had the motorhome, it only got seven miles to the gallon, and that was bad enough that I decided not to take it on the Alaska trip because that was actually a possibility at the time. Um, focus. So that's why I decided to do the motorcycle on the Alaska trip because, you know, seven miles per gallon versus 40 kind of thing. Um, I guess I'll lightning. Anyway, um, but if I'm retired and I, you know, think about it instead of, 
oh, you only get four miles per gallon in, on your motorhome. Think of it as, well, you can drive your house around, you know, and I don't have to get somewhere in a specific amount of time. You know, once I'm retired, especially, I'm in no hurry. You know, drive for a couple of days, get somewhere, sit there for the rest of the month. You know, go public lands or something like that, boondocking, whatever you want to do. So, anyway. Um, anyway, that just kind of, I just wanted to get that out um, before I hit the road because I've been kind of sketchy this week. You know, it's like, uh, which way is this going to go? You know, I got, you know, stage one is a pain in the ass getting everything down to the truck. And then it's raining. Get it to San Antonio, that's pretty straightforward. Get it in the bus, that part's pretty straightforward. Spend a little bit of time, pull out probably five seats on the right-hand side. Get back here, get the motorcycle, get back down there. Um, probably five o'clock before I hit the road, realistically. It gives me two hours of sunlight drive for 10 hours in an unknown vehicle and then once I'm there the stress level goes way down until 500 miles back on a motorcycle so you know sometimes the older you get with more experience the worse things are because then you got you know more things that can go wrong so it's probably best if you don't know too much 20 year old me wouldn't have even thought about this you know when I had you know, I bought a brand new Jetta, which while well, it was brand new, and drove it a thousand miles. Never thought twice about it. Uh, I drove my Astro van uh, from Seattle to Memphis, and then down to Baton Rouge and back. And uh, with very little money on that either. You know, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, 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 ten, the trend is I go do a trip and I don't have enough money, I don't have a margin. If something bad happens, then you're screwed. So we'll get a little bit more of the storm and then wrap it up. Go. Okay. Well, into stage one. Truck is loaded. Um, thinking of all the stuff I didn't bring that I forgot, but on the way down to San Antonio now, I'm running about half an hour late. just went by. Anyway, uh, it's about 1.37 p.m. now on Sunday, April the 2nd, and uh, there wasn't much traffic coming out of Austin. It's a little quicker than normal, so that helps. Uh, I should be at the bus by between 2.15 and 2.30. Uh, get my crash course on how to drive something with air brakes, I guess. Load things into the bus, take out some seats, and then drive the truck back and get the motorcycle. Um, weather at the moment is blue skies and sunny and warm. It was storming like crazy. That's kind of what pushed me back a little bit. I was mostly packed. Most of the stuff was in the totes and ready to go. And uh, it was dark and stormy and some thunder and just pouring down there for a while. Um, started loading at 11, 11.30, something like that, I think. Somewhere in there. Crew 
cruise along between 70 and 75. Traffic's flowing pretty good right now. So that's going to be a lot of miles today, depending on where I, if I make it through tonight on the bus or if I'm going to stop halfway. But it's about 85 miles each way from my place to where the bus is. I'm going to make that three times, plus about 500 from the, where the bus is to the ranch. So 85 times three is uh, 240, 250, say 255 plus 500, so 750 miles. Yeah, it's gonna be a heck of a ride. And then 500 coming back. Okay, it's pretty loud in here, so I don't know if this is going to work very well or not. Uh, we're out on the open highway, Interstate 10. We've got about uh, 450 miles to go. 438 miles to go, and it's just after midnight. So far, so good. It's a little squirrely driving it, but I'm getting the feel for it. Um, Cruising about 65, 70, trying to keep it below 65. Uh, filled up the gas tank. I took two, two receipts because uh, they pre-authorize pre you for $75, and that wasn't full. Uh, indicated it was full though, so that's good. When I finished, I got the receipts. Miles at the moment are 221153 and I've been driving for a while. I didn't get the miles when I started. Hopefully they got wrote down on the uh, bill of sale. Anyway, I'm not going to get a whole lot of footage on this trip because it's just dark. Uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to drive for a long time or if I'm going to pull over and stop or something like that. So Anyway, um, While I'm thinking of it though, bike loading went fairly well. It's a little bit awkward, but I got it on. Uh, found a good spot to back up to, so that helped a lot. Used single ramp and then one to walk up. Um, the bike had enough power to pull itself up as long as I kept it on the gas a little bit. I stalled it once and then that was kind of a pickle because I was covering the front brake and trying to hit the start button at the same time. That's kind of a longer reach than I thought it was. Um, it was 2.30 when I picked up the bus and we moved it over to the Walmart. And I spent some time loading from the truck and then um, I took out four seats on the right hand side. That was my plan, and that worked out okay. And that gives me plenty of room. I probably could have done it with three seats, but four was nice, so I had a little bit of room to maneuver. The handlebars are definitely wider than the door opening with the door attached. I think when I unload it, I'm going to take the door stop off and pull it all the way open because that covered the door a little bit. I took the windscreen and uh, whatchamacallit, windscreen and the mirrors off, that gave me plenty of room then. I didn't even really get a chance to look at the overhead, I think I had plenty of room coming out. It was just uh, really sketchy kind of had to hope I was still on the ramp because I couldn't see the back wheel. I think I was pretty close, so. The ramps felt really good, though. I didn't feel uh, that they were too wobbly or anything like that, so that was comforting. Got my phone doing GPS duty, and that's running off of my 12-volt adapter. Uh, one battery pack that I made that seems to be working pretty well. So 
so far. I don't seem to have a cigarette lighter on the bus yet, so I'll have to add that later. If I ever drive it again. It's kind of a shame to get a good running bus if I never drive it, but... Uh, I really don't know what uh, how many lights I have working. I've only got low beams. High beams don't work at all. I can see my front signal lights work. Really don't know if I got anything on the back or not. Yeah, I got brake lights at least. I can see them in the mirror. Should have spent a little more time before I hit the road, but. Uh, gauge instrument lights are kind of sketchy. I don't have any instrument lights on my uh, on my brake air gauge. So I got a flashlight hanging on that. That seems to work all right. Anyway, back to the drive. <laughs> 